right, let's talk about Figma versus Photoshop for Roblox UI design. Now, uh, just for some context, I personally have been using Photoshop myself for over a decade. Reason being is because, well, okay, so Figma was made in 2016, so okay, eight years ago. But anyways, I basically started uh, designing directly on Roblox and that was my platform of choice. So uh, naturally, Roblox is under what field? The gaming field. So game interfaces, if you have observed, it's quite obvious. Game UIs are far more stylized than, for example, uh, mobile or uh, web UI or website UIs, right? Software. So personally, I think game UIs can be a lot more creative because of that. Uh, stylized aspects, but of course it is also more lenient on the technical details uh, compared to software. So we're going to compare Photoshop and Figma and I believe Figma has like a free plan, which I don't think Photoshop has. All right, so here we are inside of Photoshop and uh, I'm gonna show you guys why Photoshop is so great for game UI, but it's going to be terrible for designing an app or uh, software website so yeah there is a bunch to go uh, into here I have spent hundreds of hours making these videos and also designing products for you guys if you are a creator who is serious about their dreams and goals in creating game projects or if you are a creative and a designer as well who is looking to make a career out of designing then you will appreciate these design resources I have created if you're building an anime inspired game, well, we have interface kits just for that. If you want a free sample, you can get the preview bundle completely for free. So if you are serious, then check it out with the link below or gfxcomment.com. If you are not serious, these are not for you and you can ignore this message. All right, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Okay, so first of all, Photoshop is so powerful because it has the brush tool. This is very robust and you can do fantastic, amazing things with the brush tool, right? When it comes to game UI, you can make uh, textures, so many cool effects. I don't believe Figma has a brush tool. I have not seen it. We can do things like if we, if we you know, make a shape, very simple rectangle, uh, you know, we can stylize it by using a brush tool, uh, we can make masks like this, which you can obviously also do inside of Figma. But uh, with our brush tools, uh, it's very easy to add some glow effects. And I think inside of Figma, to accomplish this, you would have to make a shape like here, and then add a blur effect, right? Uh, we're gonna take a look later I think, but uh, yeah, inside of Figma, you will have to do this right here. The shortcoming of Photoshop when it comes to UI is that although this is a shape, right? For example, if we create, uh, let's say a second shape, oops, let me bring this out, like right here, and it's gonna be size. Inside of Photoshop, um, there is no layout options. Right, all of these layers are just layers. Um, you can't apply uh, a layout, a layouts. You can't add uh, a grid, a stack, or anything of that sort. And that is essentially like the defining difference between Photoshop and Figma or any modern UI software. And well, when it comes to making UI, this is a big problem. Uh, in consideration of this sure you can make some uh you know cool looking ui assets like this right just basically layers they aren't you know an actual uh cohesive system of ui elements with layout uh actual proper spatial relations for example if i was to uh let's say okay i want to make a new rectangle let's to make it like this and then if I was to, this right here is a card. If I copy, make multiple, 
let's say like a simple row. If I was to uh, change the color here, all these other ones would not inherit this color. Okay, I would have to select each and every single one once again and choose the color. Um, although here you have like styles, which I don't even use right here. I mean, uh, I guess it's okay. Uh, it doesn't really compare to uh, Figma. And sure, I guess in Photoshop, you can make like a smart object. Yeah, so I guess um, this is like a workaround. But how efficient is this really? You know, this is kind of a pain, as you can see. Like, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, and uh, you can't make components uh, inside of Photoshop that is massive because in Framer and Figma, both you can make components which you can add variants in different states, like hover, click, for example, and you can connect interactions and flows so you can actually prototype your UI inside of Figma. Okay, let's take a look at a UI I have here. Uh, the tooltip, not the background. Um, so you can see in Figma, we have actually something called constraints right here, uh, just like Framer, where you can basically, uh, for example, if this is to be on the, you know, like top left, right? This kind of text. And if we resize um, this UI, the text basically stays or if we take a look at this website UI right here um, that I'm making okay layers we have navigation as you can see we have the home page and here the search bar let's take a look uh, we have auto layout right here increase the padding you can see it affects the uh, content Right. Yeah, that about concludes this video. I, hopefully I went over uh, the important things. Uh, hopefully I answered some questions. I don't know everything, but um, this is as far as I am aware of. So in conclusion, can you make game UI using Figma? Of course, but um, if you want to make satellite stuff, you might have to create some assets inside of Photoshop and find a way to integrate both into your workflow. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, more stuff coming very soon. Check out our store. Anyways, thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time.